Okay, that brings us into our mayor's report. Um, just this weekend, I was able to attend the Mayor's Day conference. It's a great uh, conference. Georgia Municipal Association puts a conference on in January and then one in June. I uh, was able to attend and meet with our district mamas, Metro Atlanta Mayor's Association, about ways we can serve not only the city of Snellville, but the entire Metro Atlanta community. Also, I was able to attend some training on different things for municipal government. I'd encourage uh, council members, I know we typically go to the June conference, but I'd encourage the members of council to also attend uh, the January conference, uh, the Mayor's Day conference as well in the future. Um, I do have a check, Ms. Ferris, if, if you won't leave until I see you tonight, I do have a check for my uh, sponsorship for Community Garden Box I forgot to give you at the last meeting. And Mr. Bice, I also have one for my sponsorship for the Art Commission. So if you won't leave until I'm able to give those to you tonight. Um, Finally, in my mayor's report, uh, I'd like to show some pictures and thank everyone for their help with the Martin Luther King Day celebration. That was last Monday, and we had a wonderful event. Uh, this is the South Gwinnett High School Junior ROTC came out and participated, presented the colors for us, uh, helped us set up some tables. They are a great organization at South Gwinnett High School, great ambassadors for the city. The South Gwinnett Band participated in the march. You can see all of us uh, at the beginning of the march. We marched from New Jerusalem Baptist Church to Snellville United Methodist Church, a bit longer than I thought. We didn't walk it beforehand. There was a little bit of a hill I didn't know about, but it was good. We got through it. Uh, we had probably 300 people attend the event and march with us. Uh, this is the third year we've had the event. Uh, you can see Pastor Collins with New Jerusalem Baptist Church and Pastor Lee with Brennan Church uh, just out of Snellville and High Point uh, helped sponsor some of the, uh, Pastor Collins planned the event, but Pastor Lee's church helped us sponsor the lunch we had afterwards. And you, this isn't a very good picture, but this is Carson Moore, a soloist with Triple Seven Dance Company, a local dance company here in the city of Snellville, and she performed for us while we ate lunch. Pink Anthem, our very own art vice chair of the Art Commission, Lisa Boykin's daughters are the group Pink Anthem, and they performed, they sang and danced for us while we ate. They were great performers. The uh, Police Explorers volunteered their time and uh, helped close the roads and direct traffic while we were marching through the streets. And so this is Officer Clark and the Police Explorers. Um, also, the lady in the blue vest is Dawn James. And so just as Councilman Emanuel thanked Miss James, I'd like to thank her as well because Hormel Foods and, and Dawn James donated uh, some of the turkeys we had for our turkey dinner. And then another picture of Pastor Lee marching. And the cooks. We, we, we not only marched this year, but after the march, we went to Snellville United Methodist Church, and we had a free turkey dinner, a free turkey lunch um, for almost 300 people. And we got there at 7 o'clock in the morning, Monday morning, to start cooking and preparing this dinner. Uh, but the kitchen ministry from New Jerusalem Baptist Church and part of the kitchen ministry from Snellville United Methodist Church, actually the dishwashers, uh, Mayor, Odom, Mayor Clower, uh, Wayne Odom, former city council member, and then Dick Cooper came and volunteered uh, to wash dishes and set everything up. So I'd like to thank the New Jerusalem Baptist Church kitchen ministry and these uh, volunteers from Snellville United Methodist Church. We couldn't have pulled this out without their help. I think that's, and here, here are some of the volunteers. Miss Helen, Sister Helen from New Jerusalem Baptist Church, she led the kitchen. She knows what she is doing and pulled this. I was, I was having a nervous breakdown thinking about feeding 300 people, but, but she had it covered. And so we appreciate all of their hard work and their dedication. I also would like to thank Pastor Collins and uh, Miss Beverly from New Jerusalem Baptist Church for their help in organizing this event. It was their vision uh, that we have this event, and the theme was unity in the community. Um, would like to thank uh, Sharon Hetherington. I think she's somewhere here tonight. She showed up with her family, her husband, and her children and, and helped us. Uh, got there early Monday morning and helped as well. Uh, Jamie Dempsey helped pull out pull turkey off the bone and helped with this event. Uh, and I think Michelle Couch and, and Trish Rollins also showed up. So thank you, uh, ladies, for showing up and helping with the event as well. It was a great event. We hope to make it bigger and better every year. And so if you're interested in volunteering in next year's event, please contact Pastor Collins um, 
we hope to plant it earlier this year so that it can be even better than it was this year. Uh, with that, that uh, uh, one more thing, two more things. On February 12th is the deadline to register for Run the Reagan. Uh, we'll be putting out some information tomorrow on this event, but I've been named the honorary chair. I think Chief is the chair of one of the races. Uh, this is a great event that's held here each year in the city of Snellville. It's in its 20th year, and it uh, benefits a great organization, the Gwinnett Community Clinic, which is a local nonprofit organization. Uh, and so we're excited to have this opportunity to partner with this event. Usually the county's partnered, but it's a city event, and so this year we're excited that the city's able to partner with them. Uh, so if you'd like to run, there's a 10K, a 5K, and a one-mile fun run, and the deadline to register is February 12th. The event will be held on Saturday, February 15th. They'll close down part of Ronald Reagan, and we'll be running down Ronald Reagan. Also, um, on February 7th, I'm privileged to be taking some special needs kids to the circus, some kids from Britt Elementary. Um, we're selected by the counselors and the principal there, and so I want to thank Georgia Power um, for allowing us to, to have this opportunity to take these kids that otherwise wouldn't be able to go to the circus, uh, to the circus, and I'll share pictures with you, with you about that next time. With that, I want to thank you all for coming out here tonight. Have a safe ride home, and I will open it up to public comment. Please make sure you state your name and address for the record. Uh, Marilyn Swinney, 1832 Glenwood Lane, Snellville, Georgia. I reached my limit Friday when I heard about the latest lawsuit by the mayor, which includes asking the city to pay her attorney's fees and court costs. I have decided enough is enough. I have complete confidence in Mr. Powell's handling of this suit in court but most citizens will not realize what it will cost them. Therefore, I am giving the city clerk an open records request for all legal fees associated with the mayor's lawsuits, beginning with my lawsuit in 2012. The mayor is jeopardizing our city's future. What business will want to remain here, or what new business will want to open in Snellville or relocate? When businesses start to leave and new businesses bypass Snellville, the citizens of Snellville will have to carry the burden of increased taxes. They won't know the whole story as to who is right and who is wrong. In fact, they don't care. They just want to be involved in the city. They do not want to be involved in a city that is in turmoil. All businesses and good things will go up 124 towards Lawrenceville or over to Loganville on 78 or even to Grayson. We will be a pass-through city. And I repeat, a pass-through city. Young families and young adults will never even consider coming to Snellville. And the citizens will have Kelly Couch to thank for that because she does not know how to work with people. If she can't decide who plays, what they play, and how they play, she files another lawsuit. And you know, I can't help wondering, if the mayor has all the power as she believes, why were there five other council members elected? We don't need you. When I have all the costs for legal fees and associated costs, I will make sure the citizens of Snellville are informed. I am sure the citizens have not thought about what it is costing them. I will make sure every news media within a 200 mile radius is made aware. Okay? And one more thing. At the last council meeting, I asked you, Ms. Coutts, if all this strife and turmoil was the legacy you wanted to leave as the mayor of Snellville. And I was hoping you would think about it but apparently it didn't register with you. That's so sad. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sweeney. Any other comments?
I'm, I'm uh, Gretchen Schultz, 2027 Tanglewood Drive in Snellville. And I just have a few positive things that I want to say. First of all, I do want to thank you, Mayor, for your sponsorship of a bed in the, in the uh, community garden. As I want to thank all the members of the uh, City Council who have supported us with um, entry arbors, entry plantings, beds, um, benches, and there's other members in the audience who have also done this, and we're extremely grateful. Our, our uh, community garden is operating on a bare bones um, uh, budget, and if anybody else in the audience or the, or the uh, community is interested in a, a bed sponsorship, we could certainly use it this, this year as we um, need the funds to, to purchase um, lumber to build additional beds. Along that line, I want to mention that we are currently accepting applications from our current gardeners who would want to um, rent their bed again for the 2014 um, uh, garden, um, garden season. At, um, we're, we're allowing them until February 10th to submit their applications and bed rental fee. And beginning um, February 10th, we'll then accept applications for any beds that aren't rented by the um, current renters and um, see how many new beds we may need to build and how much, how much money we have in the bank to, um, to build additional beds. So any of you that are thinking of gardening with us, we would, we would love to have you. We have a great time in, in the garden. And we learn a lot from each other when we garden, when we have our um, work days. We, it doesn't even seem like work to me anyway. We just have a great time together. Um, I also want to mention that I'd like everybody to mark their calendar for March 15th. We're having a, a, a casino night again. It's our second annual casino night at Summit Chase Country Club. And this year we're working, um, STAT is working with the, I always get the name of the group wrong, Gwinnett Sunshine Rotary, I believe is the correct name. And the Greater East Side Chamber of Commerce is also joining us this year. It, we had the greatest time last year. It was so much fun. And we raised about half the money that we need for a central um, central uh, pavilion in the garden. And we're hoping we can raise the additional funds um, uh, this year. And that, that uh, pavilion will provide a shade structure for the gardeners when they're out there. And it will also be a structure that can be used if we have events in the garden. So that's going to be an important addition to our garden. This spring, we'll be moving a greenhouse to the garden, which is going to be a huge project. <laughs> and we're also going to be building a calendar garden, or planting a calendar garden, I should say, in the garden, which I didn't know what a calendar garden was until somebody explained it to me. It's a garden that has something in bloom almost all of, of, the, of the year. And I'm really excited to tell you that um, Gwinnett Technical College is working with us on this project. They have a calendar garden there, so they are propagating all of the plant material for us at Gwinnett Technical College now, and they are going to be providing all those plants for our calendar garden free of charge to us. So it's a great um, partnership that we have with the garden and, and uh, Gwinnett Technical College, so I'm very proud of that. The um, only other thing I wanted to mention was about the Snellville Farmers Market. I am so proud to tell you that where we are at this point with our vendor applications. We, we have only about, I can't tell you, I think it's six or seven booth spaces left to rent out for the 2014 um, market season. And, I think, I think back to where we were in 2010, which was our very first year, and Tom and Barbara both know because they were at the meetings for the market from the very first um, meeting we had at our house, 
And we were so worried about how we were going to attract vendors, how we were going to attract them to this market that nobody knew anything about, and how we were going to convince them to um, try our market. And we were calling vendors. We were begging them. We were visiting other farmers' markets that maybe had their market on a different day and trying to convince them to try our market. And um, I'm, I'm just so proud that we've acquired this kind of a reputation now that in before the end of January, we're pretty close to being already full. And we only only three of the booth spaces at this point are not rented for the full season. Though, I mean, almost all of them are full season rentals. So I'm just really proud of the work that the Farmer's Market Group has done. In fact, I'd like the Farmer's Market volunteers to stand up because they, <laughs> Susan, Kathy, Ron, and Kurt, And we have um, been able to attract a couple new volunteers to our group this year. I think Matt uh, Zarek has said that he'll help us when he can. Um, Tricia Rollins has said she'll help us when she can. So we're very, very grateful to those folks because when we need the help, and this isn't an easy time to get volunteers, is between 6.30 and 8 on Saturday morning. Oh, you didn't hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Right. We, um, one of the things we pride ourselves on, and I think one of the reasons we can attract vendors to our market, is that we um, strive to give our vendors help when they arrive at our market. We help them erect their tents. We get them in their booth space. We help some of them un unload their, their uh, vehicles. We are an extremely vendor-friendly market, and our vendors tell us they don't get that kind of treatment anywhere else that they go. So um, we, we work hard between those hours and can always use a few additional hands. So I just wanted to bring you the good news about the uh, community garden and the farmer's market. I'm just real proud of where both projects are at this point. Thank you. Additional. <coughs> Madam Mayor, no. Councillors, my name is Claudette Forbes. I live at 2781 London Barry Court. And Councillor Witz, this is really a question I have for you since you raised the topic of my appointment to the URA Board. I think I need to explain to you what I know and also ask you a question. I was appointed to the board and I was voted on by council and mayor and I attended a meeting, a training in Athens for a day and I learned a lot. Then I attended one meeting. After that meeting, apparently I was removed from the board I didn't know why, no one said anything to me, and tonight you said it's um, a technical, some technical issues. Could you please explain to me what is that technical issue, because no one told me anything at all. I'd be glad to. Please. Um, there was, when you were, the night that you were put up, if you remember the, at the meeting before, I'm the one that asked you to look at the URA because I thought you'd be very good there. The following week, you were, putting on, you were put on the board. We were all expecting that you would be nominated and elected to the open seat that still remains open, okay? Mm -hmm. And we voted for that. The next day, the mayor said, no, that's not the board, the board position she wanted you to have. She wanted you to have uh, Todd Warner's seat, a seat that's already been taken by a man who's been on that board since its inception. She, we were not aware of that. So it became a technical problem between your election to which seat you were on. In the minutes state that you were elected to a seat that was not even open because there was some technical problems on that that was unknown. So at the, our work session, our city man, our city attorney advised us that we, what we should do is just nullify that and renominate you for the position on the open seat. 
you can go back and look at all the agendas, ma'am, and all the minutes. Your name was never once more presented by the mayor. Had it been put up, you would have immediately been voted again 6-0 like you were the first time. It was a technical error. We asked the mayor that night, just put it back on the agenda and we'll approve it. And it, it never happened. That's what happened. I understand that, but then I'm thinking that shouldn't the board at least tell me something that I was removed? I, I was not told anything Ma'am, well, all. I agree with you. Absolutely no. I, I'm not, that's not, you know, that's, I, I don't know why that, that happened. I don't know why you weren't, it wasn't explained to you by the mayor. I don't know why you weren't renominated. All I can tell you is that's what happened. Okay, and uh, again, um, you, that's exactly what happened. And, and you know, the city attorney's here, he can tell you that. The people who were on the, on, the, on the council at that time can also confirm that. I have no reason to lie to you. That's exactly what happened. Thank you very you're, much. You're very welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Forbes. Any other public comment? Seeing none, I will close the public comment. The time is 849 and we are adjourned. Have a good evening.